before we get started, I, I do want to tell you a little bit about my next book. Um, it's going to really help you guys. There's, I could probably spend 30 minutes just telling you all the new things I've developed to help you. Um, but I want to go through at least a few of them. The first one I want to tell you about, because it, it's the most important, is the emotional authenticity method that I've developed in comparison to emotional intelligence. And this is what I want you to think about. Emotional intelligence promised you, um, and first of all, this will sound like I'm disparaging the people who created that. That's not my intent. Um, I wouldn't have a career. They, them creating that name, everybody uses it, so nobody would even listen to me if they hadn't come up with that. But it's like most things in personal development. That's why I got into this. Everyone just wants to build the outside of the puzzle. Think of building a puzzle. Where do you always start? The outer edges, right? Because they're simple to snap together. But let me ask you, if all you ever build is the outside of the puzzle, do you ever see the picture? Never. You never get to see the glory. And that's our life. Our life and our glory is in that middle. All those tough little pieces that we don't know how to put together. Well, that's what emotional authenticity gives you because emotional intelligence promise four things. Um, emotional awareness, social awareness, relationship awareness, and I'm drawing a blank on the fourth. It doesn't deliver on any of those, honestly. First of all, I'm going to give you 10 reasons why emotional intelligence falls short of its promise, okay? And this is what I've developed emotional authenticity for to give you that middle of the puzzle so you can create that picture in your life, that authentic life that you deserve, all right? The first thing is the whole model of emotional intelligence was built on a neuroscientific model of the brain that had been outdated before the book was even written. I, I don't want to get into the specifics of it, but the old belief was we had a three parts to our brain and that each part worked, in, you know, did a certain thing. That's not even how our brain works. You're going to learn how our brain actually works and how um, our actually every single piece of information we ever take in comes into our emotional side. It goes over to our left, our you know, so-called thinking side, which is supposed to send it back and it never does. And that's why everyone's struggling is because we don't teach emotional authenticity. And you're going to learn why that makes so-called smart people, um, they really struggle with common sense. Because our best logic comes when it is balanced mostly with emotion. Remember, it starts on the right. It's supposed to finish on the right. It doesn't because we've never taught emotional authenticity. So that's number one. Number two, it shows you how your emotional feeling definitions, everything's learned in childhood. That's the thing about emotional intelligence. They go, well, you know, when something happens, think, sit and think about it. And maybe, you know, something your sister did. Literally, every adult emotional re reaction you ever have, you learned in childhood. All you're ever doing, I don't care if you're 20 years old or 80 years old, whenever you have an emotional reaction, positive or negative, you are literally anywhere from 2 to 10 years old. All you're doing is replaying your childhood. That's it. I'll, and I show you that and prove it to you. That's exactly how the brain works. So you need to know that an emotional intelligence doesn't tell you that you need to go back and become an expert in your childhood emotional definitions. And it, they don't teach you that. And that's why it falls short. Number three, um, <clears throat> it also doesn't show you that all of that 70% of those emotional definitions are pain filled and self sabotaging. Emotional authenticity is going to walk you in to show you how all of those definitions you created are working against you, not for you. Number four, emotional authenticity should provide you a process to stop those self-sabotaging emotions and create new positive ones that work for you and stop working against you. All right. They, they empower you and reattach you to your authentic self. EQ does not provide you that process. Number five. Emotional authenticity allows you to reconnect to your body. Our emotions, uh, one-third of our emotions comes from our body. EQ, emotional intelligence, doesn't give you any process that allows you to connect to your body. You have to do that if you want so-called emotional intelligence. Number six, it, pro it 
provide emotional authenticity provides a process to heal the hurt from childhood so you can reclaim your authentic self. EQ just builds the outer edges of the puzzle. It doesn't go into the middle where the painting and the color is. Emotional authenticity gives you a step-by-step process to find those middle of the puzzle pieces to put them together so you can make sense of your life and and live in your authentic self. Number seven, this is huge. If you want emotional intelligence, you have to have codependence recovery. All of us are codependent. You're going to discover that in my book, what makes us codependent, how we exercise it, either falsely empowered or disempowered, how it's shame-based, all of that. Emotional intelligence doesn't even bring that up. You will not gain emotional intelligence unless you gain emotional authenticity, which requires codependence recovery. Number eight, emotional authenticity provides a process for you to not only become aware of, but to conquer your self-deception and denial. You're going to discover. There's there's a neat little part of my book where I show you this is the CIA CIA agents created this 21 questions, 21 ways people lie. You're going to be flabbergasted. You're going to realize the way all of us talk on a daily basis, we lie nonstop. We're all in self-deception. And and I prove it pretty convincingly that self-deception is the single greatest killer on the planet today. And then I give you a secret, something called a paradox, a way to take your words and turn them so that you can see the truth. No other process does that. Emotional intelligence doesn't even go near it, doesn't even tell you that self-deception is the root of all of your emotional dysregulation. You're going to learn all about it. More importantly, you're going to learn the process. I've never shared this process. It's not in my master. Well, some of it's in my master classes, but I've developed you know new stuff in the last month or two that I haven't quite put in my master classes yet. So you're getting material you can't get anywhere else that'll fund it. You, you're going to be blown away at how much you immediately re, uh, learn about yourself and others. And just simple little things, you're going to be able to tell when somebody's lying like that, but you're also going to be able to tell when you're lying too. All right. Number nine, it provides a process to achieve complete emotional self-awareness and the solution to living in your authentic self. As you can see, emotional intelligence, just the few things I've talked about, only talk about the count, the outside edges, not the middle is what you really need. Okay. So, um, Oh, one more is is just bringing home that concept that emotional and emotional authenticity gives you the skills and tools, the knowledge skills and tools to build the complete emotional puzzle. All right. Now, with that as a framework in the old chat, here's what I'll do for you. I had put links to get a free chapter of the book. To pre-order the book, it releases January 1st. Actually, the ebook is available on Barnes & Noble right now. But you can pre-order the paperback and hardback if you'd like to. But I'll put those once this is all finished. I'm not going to stop and do that now. It is in the old chat from the old um, uh, attempted live. But I'll give that to you. Um, but first, before I, I see everyone's asking a bunch of questions, I made a commitment. These people paid um, over here for me to answer their questions. So I need to do that first. I need to honor that. The first one came from Harmony. She said, please tell me how, um, uh, I, she says she lives next door to her narcissistic ex who is charged and has a restraining order. How can I free myself? And she says she can't move. Well, if you can't move, then, you know, you have a couple of options. One is, Do whatever you can to save as much money as possible so that you can move. Number two is any transgression on that restraining order, act on it immediately. Don't let them, don't let them off the hook ever, ever, ever set firm boundaries. Whatever is contained in the restraining order, don't let even the slightest thing slip constantly reinforce the restraint the restraining order if he breaks it enough he, you'll be free of him he'll be in jail all right so in other words we have to stop the biggest thing that gets people in trouble with narcissists is they focus on trying to control them and getting them to stop that that's the death of us 
Every time you want to think about how you trying to change them and control them, stop and go, what are my options? What can I control? What's in my power? Well, following the restraining order, doing whatever you can to save money to get another house. In other words, focus on what you can control yourself. All right. Um, there was somebody else, Adam, I think, or Nadia. Nadia said, making new friends is exhausting, especially as people move a lot. What do you look for in a friend and how do you maintain long lasting friendships? What a great question. Um, friendships, like any relationship, take time. I always use the adage of gas pedals. So as you share a little more intimacy, see what they do. If they pull away, back off. If they join you, hopefully they accelerate a little bit, then you can accelerate more. In other words, you know, it's a constant give and take of watching their behavior. And here's the key. This is the biggest thing people mistake in relationships is they listen to their words. A person is not their words. They are their actions. And every time we justify their actions, that's when we're in self-deception and denial. That's why my book is so important for people wanting to build relationship. If we're Because I teach four things, truth, responsibility, healing, and forgiveness. We have to get into truth. And the biggest place we have to get into truth is with ourselves. All right. And so when we minimize, suppress, these are all denial techniques, condone and <clears throat> excuse poor behavior. We're, we just said ourselves, we're in self-deception. This person has shown us by their actions who they are and we chose not to listen to it. And then we blame them. Blame is another denial technique. Whenever we judge, blame, hate, criticize anyone or anything, while it may be true, they're doing those things. This is what you're going to learn about a paradox in my book. Every time you do that, you're talking to yourself. I know that sounds crazy, but I prove it to you. It's very simple to understand. And so your life will transform when you realize, you know, all those frustrating moments, those frustrating people on TV, all of that stuff, and you, you know, blow out this judgment and all of that. You're actually talking to yourself. It's your doorway into your authentic self. It's actually nothing to be afraid of, nothing to be ashamed of. It's, it's how our authentic self, we actually set up our own demise to reconnect us to ourselves. But nobody's laid the process out for you. Emotional intelligence, not even, it doesn't even make you aware of that fact. And so that's what you're going to realize is basically everything in life is a paradox. The answer is in the opposite. I show you repeatedly through the book that almost everything you've learned, the solution is opposite of that. And I, I don't only show it, I give you the process so you can discover it for yourself. And once you see that, then you're, you can reattach to your authentic self. Why can't I live a life of full fulfillment? Uh, this is faith, it says. Oh, this is sad. Why can't I have a life of fulfillment? I was molested by my dad when little. My whole life has been lonely and depressing. Well, it would be. Faith, my goodness. That's a terrible tragedy. Like, of course you'd be sad. Now, there is a way to live a life of fulfillment. Unfortunately, it takes work. We have to do the recovery work. And so the reason you're so sad is you're still stuck in that childhood pain. It hasn't been completely healed. And I know all of us want a magic wand, you know, even me. For There were many years I watched videos, read books. I was hoping I'd read one sentence and it would all go away. Everybody does. But that's just not how recovery works. It takes daily effort. I'm still... I've been doing this since I was 21. I'm 57 now. I've been working my tail off on my recovery, and I have to do certain recovery things every single day. It never ends. It's a lifestyle. In other words, it's choosing to, to live our life differently because the old way isn't working. And so, Faith, if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, then my suggestion to you is it doesn't have to be me. But pick a teacher you know, like, and trust. And invest in their programs. Like, you're going to have to do it. Whether they offer books or classes. You know, I offer thousands of dollars of free content on my website. They're free downloads. I have the free um, email series. I have the free um, online masterclass. Like, I give out a ton of free stuff. 
Start there. Like start with the teacher's free stuff. Check it out. Does it feel right? Does it resonate with you? If it does, then jump in. Make the commitment and start doing the work every day. That's just, that's the only way we're going to get out of any of this is a commitment to doing the work. So, uh, please, where do we get your books from? How do you say this? Kalekadon? Kalekadon? I think that's how you say it. Usually I'm good with names. All right. On Amazon right now, you can pre-order the ebook only. They don't offer pre-sales for paperback and hardback, but Barnes and Noble. Barnes and Noble right now, my ebook is live. And they also offer um, pre-sale. You can pre-order both my paperback and my hardback on Barnes and Noble right now. They will ship to you January 1st. That's when it gets released. So if you want my ebook today, go to Barnes and Noble right now. If you want the paperback or the hardback, you can either pre-order right now on Barnes and Noble or wait till Amazon releases my book on January 1st, whichever works best for you. Okay. So again, both Barnes and Noble and Amazon are your two options to get my book. Uh, where can you find my first book? Amazon. Amazon's, I haven't loaded my first book onto Barnes and Noble. I'm going to do that. But Amazon, you can get it in paperback, um, ebook, and Audible. My Audible of my new book, I'm still recording it. It'll be out in January. I personally think, because the concepts I talk about are so deep, and I use my life story, and look, because I decided to deal with the middle of the recovery puzzle, the ugly stuff, the tough stuff that nobody else likes to tell you, everyone wants to give you the superficial bubble gum outside part of the puzzle, that when you read my stuff, even because only 7% of all communication is words, 93% is tone and body language. So when we read something, we project our emotions onto it. So you might hear my, you might read my words and project something that isn't there. But when you hear my voice and listen to my audible, it's a completely different experience. So I always recommend to people the best way to consume my content when it comes to my books is listen to the Audible first, then read the book, because then you get the full emotional picture and landscape of what's going on. And you won't project your, remember how I said earlier, how emotions work. Every single emotion you ever have as an adult, you're reliving your childhood. Emotions are not pre-programmed, they are learned. And we learn them in childhood. And so when you're even at 80 years old, and if you get angry, sad, scared, happy, whatever it is, you learn that way back there. You are two, four, six, eight, ten 10 years old when you have that emotion. And so it's imperative that when you, this is why relationships don't work. Everyone text messages. And so they misread a word. They project in their emotion that they're feeling onto that word, their emotional definition. They completely um, misunderstand the other person. Text, please. If you're going to pursue relationships, start demanding phone calls and in-person meetings. Get rid of the texting. Like, don't do it. Meet in a public place. Have a cup of coffee. Let words lie. Bodies don't. That's why you watch actions. You don't listen to words. And then when you read my book and discover the 21 ways people lie, you can just sit there and literally, it's so fascinating. You're going to love that part of the book when I get into the denial and self-deception and you read those 21 ways. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to start watching and go, oh my God, everyone's lying nonstop. But as I say in the book, the most important part is to watch how you are lying to yourself because that's, that's the gap in our process that nobody's teaching you is how we are in self-deception and we can't see ourselves authentically. And my book lays out that process so you can get into truth. Remember, I teach truth, responsibility, healing, and forgiveness. And so I give you a process to get into truth, show you how to take responsibility, do the healing work so you can forgive yourself <clears throat> and forgive those who hurt you as well. All right, let's see. Uh, Oh, I didn't give you the name of my book. Maybe that's why you didn't see it. The name of the book is Your Journey to Being Yourself. Your Journey to Being Yourself. Put that in Barnes & Noble. It'll pop right up. Okay? 
Um, let's see here. Uh, I'll get back to the other questions. Jay just popped in. Jay, thank you for the, the donation. That's really, I. how do we heart? Uh, this is the first time I've done a live stream. So obviously I'm, I'm perfectly imperfect at this. I have, I have a lot of recovery to do around live streams, but let's get to Jay here. He says he struggled releasing anger and rage, but no contact from my, who, from somebody who abused for over 15 years. I've tried your anger video, but nothing has helped. Lots of anger and tears. Do you have any advice on regulating CPTS from, oh, Jay. Breaks my heart. Now, any suggestions I give in this chat, remember, um, I don't know the full story. So I'm making assumptions, you know, uh, you know, to really dig in and get concrete on some of these things. Um, I'd have, you know, I'd have to work with a client. I'm not trying to sell you on booking a session. I'm just saying I can only give generalities. All right. And so in general, a person who's stuck in anger, remember anger covers fear. Fear is always one of three things, the fear of rejection, the fear of inadequacy. In other words, we don't think we have the knowledge, skills, or tools to do something or the fear of powerlessness. So what that tells me, Jay, is you know, my first book, I really dig into those three. And I have plenty of videos on YouTube about the RIP method to deal with fear. So it sounds like there's a lot of underlying um, trauma around rejection, inadequacy, and powerlessness. And those haven't been addressed. And then what fear hides is sadness. And so what this, the sadness is that's childhood trauma that created the attraction to the abuser. So ultimately, the reason you're not able to let go is, is you haven't gone deep enough. Um, there's, I, it, it does, again, it doesn't have to be me, but please find a professional. If you can, find a professional. And if it were me, the requirements I'd look for from a professional are, one, are they gifted at dealing with emotions? Not cognitive behavioral therapy, because that's not going to solve your problem. You need somebody who's really not just emotional intelligence, but the things I teach, deep emotional authenticity work, codependence recovery. And what you're going to want to ask them is, do they know who Pia Melody is? If they don't, run. They're, they, they won't be able to take. Well, that's not fair. They might be able to help you some, but to get to the bottom of everything, you're going to, you need a, a therapist who knows about Pia Melody and is, and knows all of her stuff. All right. So Jay, my suggestion to you would be, um, watch my fear videos, pick up my first book. If you haven't to learn about, um, the anger, if you haven't signed up for my online master classes, those are a great option too. So you can get to that underlying rage that's in childhood. Cause ultimately you're still really hurt from childhood. That's like in your message. Again, I'm making an assumption. Your message is about the last person you were with. Well, the reason you picked that person is because of childhood. So until you get to the middle of the puzzle, stop working around the edges and get to the heart of where you learned your attraction to somebody like that. You're going to stay stuck here. So it, everything goes back to childhood. If you want to heal it, and that's what my whole platform is about. It's about dealing with the root causes not, you know, the center of the puzzle, not the outside border. Okay. So consume as much of my content as possible. Please do all the free stuff. Once you've worked through that, then if you feel like I'm someone, you know, like, and trust, then you can make an investment into my other programs. Okay. Is it true that 50% humans are securely attached? Danielle asked this. No, that I don't believe that's true at all. Um, the, I go into, um, in my book, how the medical and science community is in massive self-deception and denial. There, it is not true in my life experience and my working with people that 50% of the population are secure attachment, not even close. Yes, John, this is the first, I was like, what the heck? I got to go live here. Like you guys are always leaving comments. I can't respond to them all. So um, I, I thought maybe I'll try this. It might, I get sick of talking, doing the videos, talking to the camera. I'm like, well, maybe I'll talk to you guys or at least kind of, um, let's see, how could we strengthen our self discipline? Oh, this comes from, how do you say it? Jovan, Jovan, 
Uh, great question. Um, <clears throat> the reason we don't have self-discipline is a codependent dynamic. It's fascinating. It's our inability to say no to ourselves. So what that tells me is in childhood, you got caught in what I call the attachment authenticity bind. I just You're going to learn about all of this in my book. I didn't deal with this in my first one. This is going to blow you away of how we are all placed as children. We must receive attachment from our parents physically and emotionally or we'll die. That's our first need as a human. Our second need as a human is the pursuit of our authentic selves, our inherent power, our inherent destiny, our morals, values, needs, wants, negotiables, and non-negotiables. Well, think about it. What happened at two years old when you just learned to start exploring the world? No, no, no. Parents grab all that fear. No. Look, they wanted to save you from falling down the stairs, but because we don't teach emotional authenticity, they don't realize in that moment they dumped all of their shame into you, all of their fear. You already lost attachment to your authentic self before you were ever cognitively aware. And so right there, even before you're aware, a child learns, wait a minute, if I want to attach, I have to drop my authenticity. Think of it. Children smile 400 times, over 400 times a day, adults less than 20. That's the loss of authenticity. That happens in childhood where our parents, instead of correcting us and saying, you know, that behavior is less than perfect, they say you're less than perfect. And so we learn to do what's called giving ourselves away. We don't, we learned that we have to say yes or we won't survive. And so we don't know how to say no. And so the inability to say no was learned in childhood. And so the lack of self-discipline is we don't know how to say no to ourselves. It usually starts with our inability to say no to others, but then we get so drained emotionally um, because we're giving ourselves away because we're not meeting our own needs and wants that we then break our own rules we buy ourselves something we can't afford. We skip a workout. It's like our chance to celebrate, but we're going against ourselves. We're now attacking our own authenticity. All right. My suggestion, look, I, I don't know how to do this, but like I've done thousands of videos and they're all very helpful, but the complete process to recover from all of this stuff is in my books and classes. And, and the problem is I just, I hate talking about that because it's like a sales pitch and I don't know how to bring it up. I, I haven't figured that out. How do I share that information without it coming across? Like I'm just trying to get your money. I mean, obviously I need your money. I, I wouldn't be able to do any of these videos. Most of my income pays for all of this, but I'm just trying to be truthful. I lay out, you know, my books are in order. Here's the process. My classes are in order. Videos are on a topic. And you can piece together, or my free downloads are on a little piece. But the recovery journey is a process. We have to start here and move our way through it. And I, I, I guess maybe I never thought of that. I guess I could have started my whole YouTube channel doing that and giving it away for free. Um, but I didn't do that. I never thought of it till now. At any rate, the, if you want the solution to these problems, again, it doesn't have to be me. It does have to be a teacher you know, like, and trust, and you invest in their programs. It's the only way you're going to heal these things, okay? Um, let's see. Who did I miss? Oh, Lady Luck. Any tips for facing the narc in court? Boundaries, 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 boundaries. The first thing to recognize is Here's a tip. I had to do this. Um, and I do this with all my clients. I teach them what's called an exterior boundary. <laughs> now, you can pick anything you want. Um, some people pick a glass jar that comes over top of them. Now, the key is with any, I'm going to give you lots of different ideas. The key is you have to have a door somewhere in this thing so you can let truth in, but you can allow all the manipulation, deceit, Anger, venom, all the terrible things just bounce off. So some people picture a glass 
bell jar over them. Some, they're inside a balloon. One person thought of uh, Star Trek, beam me up, Scotty. You know, when the narc or somebody came at them, they just beam away. Another thought of the Quran catching a person's words, or another one said the Bible. Another one thought of a castle with a moat and a drawbridge. And so only truth, they'd let the drawbridge down for truth. So here's what I would do when I was going through divorce with my first wife, who was, it was very toxic. I would always, whether I was going to pick the kids up, court date, whatever it was, I would always arrive 15 to 30 minutes early and I would just sit and visualize and feel that protection come over me. Here's how I did it. I would reach in, grab my heart, and like when I'd walk, I'd walk to the door to grab the kids and I literally felt like my arm, I'm saying, was out here holding my heart. So whatever she said or did went right through me. She didn't know my heart was over there. She's trying to get it in my heart, but it was over here. That's how I protected myself. And so when I was on the stand in court, I, I felt like I was sitting there like this. And from this place, I could be mature and moderate. And so I learned to pause before answering any questions and really think about it because lawyers put words in your mouth. I remember they handed me all these financial documents and said, you're in charge of the finances, right? This is yours. You did this. Do you see that you stole all this money? And I, and I paused and I went, I, I, I had to think, where is the truth? Because I'm always, remember, truth, responsibility, healing, forgiveness. I had to look for truth. Is it true I handled the finances by that point? Yes. So I said to her, yes, it is true I handled the finances. As to whether this is an accurate reflection of the work I did, I don't know. You just placed this in front of me right now. I haven't had a chance to review it. I don't know if, if this is how the accounts were left. When I had access to the computers, I hear that you're telling me that's what it is, but I can't tell you that's true. Do you see? I owned what was true, but I didn't give myself away. I didn't say yes. I held on to my morals and values, my needs and wants, and, and you know, just said, frankly, I don't know. I don't know. And you should have seen that lawyer. She just, she did not expect that answer. She totally fumbled. And so that's my um, suggestion to you, Lady Luck, is make sure you make the choice to focus on what you can control, which is you. Don't be hyper vigilant trying to figure out how they're going to attack you. Make put a plan in place. What am I going to? Because you know there are certain things they say and do. Have a plan. Okay, when they do this, how am I going to react? What am I? You know, am I going to walk away? Am I going to say, oh, I hear that works for you? Stay boundaried. If you don't know about boundaries, um. Pia Melody is a great resource. I have recommended books of hers on my um, recommended reading list. I talk about it in both of my books, How to Set Boundaries, and especially my first book. I give great examples of how I set boundaries um, with both my first and second wife. So those are some options for you. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, how old are you, Kelly? Actually, I'm Kenny. Kelly's my first wife. Um, I'm 57, but I know I look 18, but yeah, I'm just a little bit older. <laughs> so uh, Bethany and Angel, Angie girl are asking the same question. How do I move on from a mother and mesh man? Well, again, this I don't have all the details, but from the tone, the words you chose, it sounds like you want to leave. Well, that's the first step, leave. Accept the fact that this man, through no fault, well, it's not his fault. His mother enmeshed with him, so he has no shot. He's already married to his mother, and so he's in a loyalty bind. And people that are in a loyalty bind with a parent, they'll never leave the parent unless they do severe trauma recovery work. So if it were me and I were in that position, I would make a request. I would say, look, um, are you interested in, you know, first of all, what are your thoughts about your relationship with your mother? Do you think it's healthy or do you, you know, think there might be some things that need to be improved on? 
If he says, oh, it's fine, you have your answer. Move on. If he says, oh, well, there's some things, ask if he's be willing to get professional help. Now, the key is don't get professional help for him. Don't do the research. Let him do that himself. His actions, he has to be the one who makes the commitment to his recovery. If you do it for him, he's he'll never get any better. He has to choose to do it. So if you don't see that, then you have your answer. Now, as far as how do you move on, that's recovery work. That that the next step for you is to go into your childhood trauma and figure out what happened in your childhood that made you attracted to and picked a man who was emotionally unavailable. What that tells me is one or both of your parents were emotionally unavailable. And that's, and until you heal that wound, you'll keep being attracted to men who are emotionally unavailable. So if you don't know how to do that, again, there's thousands of free videos on my YouTube channel here. Um, there's all the uh, free downloads on my website. There's the recommended reading list on my website, my book, Your Journey to Success, my new book, uh, Your Journey to Being Yourself, which all can be found on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Those are some suggestions um, to get started on your own recovery. My son-in-law is now controlling when I can see my granddaughters. What can I do? Not much. I mean, you can check the laws. And this is, I'm sorry, Tamara. <clears throat> Tamara asked this question. It depends on the state or country you live in and what those laws are. If it were me, I would investigate those. Some states are now granting uh, grandparent rights. If your state allows that, then I would put a plan in place and start pursuing that. If they don't allow that, then there's just not much you can do. It, you know, There are many things in life we have absolutely no control over. And I know that here, like I think a lot of you know, my kids don't talk to me. And it's out of my control, except one thing. I continue on a daily basis working on my trauma recovery, working on learning how to be a parent, even though I haven't talked to them in years. So that if they ever do come back, when they come back, they see a man who's completely different than what they were told. That's my responsibility as a father. Just because my kids aren't around and just because your grandkids aren't around does not mean your responsibility as a grandparent is over. It is always our responsibility to learn and grow. And so if it were me and I weren't seeing a grand, I'm actually not seeing my grandchild. That's the choice I make. I constantly, you know, really the biggest thing is confronting self with my self-deception and denial. That's the secret to all recovery work is self-deception and denial. If, if you don't even know that, or if that's not the primary thing in your recovery journey, that's why you're struggling. And that's why I wrote this book, because it's all about how self-deception and denial are at the root of everybody's struggle. And, but more importantly, how to start facing it and dealing with it. So Tamara, if that was, if I were in your shoes and you don't have any access to, um, help from the courts, then I would make my, my, it would be my mission to learn and grow as a grandparent and as a parent, um, and look for where I need to take ownership. It, was there anything in my parenting? And look, every parent hurts their kids. All of us do. We all leave trauma in our kids. It's like unavoidable. I mean, we're human. <laughs> we're limited. And none of us take a single class on how to be a parent yet. We all think, no, no, I didn't hurt my kids. Like, that's, I put, this is a sentence from my book. That's a, a level of detachment from truth that's nearly narcissistic. Any parent who thinks they didn't traumatize their child is so detached from truth, it's nearly narcissistic. I think that's almost the exact quote from my book. It is impossible to not do hurtful and traumatic things to our children because we are human. We are limited. We are perfectly imperfect. And even if we were all surrounded by experts all day, every day, because we're human and limited, we would still make mistakes that left wounds in our children. So Tamara, if it were me, I would make it my life's journey to break down everything you did as a parent and recognize you did those things because of your own unhealed childhood trauma in childhood, 
I'd make that the focus because that's what you can control so that if and when they come back, they see a completely different woman. That's, I believe, our responsibility as a parent. A parent who chooses not to do that is irresponsible. Is I, I, I give that difference. They're not response able. They're not, they don't have the ability to respond to these situations because they haven't done the recovery work. And so a parent who doesn't do the recovery work and doesn't take ownership of their perfect imperfections as a parent is irresponse able. They don't have the ability to navigate these situations. Well, how do you solve that? As I always say, go become an expert. Great question, Tamara. All right, Jay. Just asked a question. Thanks for the donations. And I'm sorry, I, did, I, did, I hope I thanked everybody else who made a donation. Is it normal to have somatic experiencing body shaking while emotional release, such as anger, primal rage, sadness during healing work? Yes, very normal. Um, let me see if I can pull it up. I have a great book for you. Uh, I didn't go away. I'm looking for a book. Uh, my, it's either this one trauma memory or dang it it's i don't want to <laughs> look up peter levine you can find his books on my recommended reading list he gives you somatic and maybe this is what you've already been doing his somatic experience uh recovery work i did that on my ankle because i i have to i have to get both my hip and ankle replaced and i hurt my ankle as a kid and i had this incredible shaking experience I'm going to give you a tip, something that if you ever run into a tragic accident, car accident, tsunami, fire, and what most people do is when they run up on a scene like that and the person starts to shake, they try and stop them. No, don't do that. couple things. First of all, soften your voice. Hi, my name's Kenny. How are you? What's your name? You're doing great. You're going to be okay. And I want you to know that if you have the urge to get up and run, or if you have the urge to shake, it's okay. That's really good for you. See, that's what creates PTSD is in, because this is what uh, Levine figured out is deer when they get you know shot or they get afraid, they go through that somatic shaking experience. It releases the trauma. A person with PTSD got constrained during the trauma. They couldn't release it. So if you ever run up on a situation like that, let the person, even if they have a broken leg and they want to get up and run, let them. Their adrenaline will protect them. Don't stop them. Like don't stop them. Let them express their emotional pain and that's how they'll release it and they won't have PTSD. Okay. So Jay, sounds like you're doing amazing work. You're digging into it. Now I, I don't have enough information, but please don't worry about that. Like, you know, the fear comes up of, Oh my God, I'm shaking. Is, am I doing something wrong? Am I going to hurt myself? No, you're doing it perfectly. So keep at it. Well done, Jay. Great question. I'm glad you that brought that up. Um, let's see who else is here. Uh, why do partners put their children against the other partner? <clears throat> That's from Angie McMillan. Um, because they're in pain. Because they're in their child, adapted, adapted, wounded child. They're filled with shame from their own childhood. And they don't know how to deal with it. I'm not excusing it. It's in it, Look, I went through it, but I have tremendous empathy for the narcissist or the parent who alienates because I know why they're doing it. They're so detached from their authentic self. They were so traumatized and they're so filled with self-loathing shame. Here's what you have to recognize. And this is where my book is going to save you. My new book, Your Journey to Being Yourself is going to save your life. Because all of these moments that we all project back on ourselves and think it's they're doing it to us, it has nothing to do with us. They're telling us about them. And that's what my book will show you. And so someone in this situation, if I hadn't figured this out, I don't know that I'd have made it because of what I've been through with my kids, the false accusations, the things. I, there's a lot I just don't share because my kids don't know it and it's... The things I've shared are appropriate to share, but the level of 
abuse I went through, if they ever come back and they ever want to know, they get to hear that first. And so I wouldn't have figured, I wouldn't have been able to survive what I've been through if I didn't learn and discover that when somebody is being awful, it's a window into their pain. That does not mean I excuse it, but I can understand it. I can understand it. And then I don't take it personally. And that allows me to let go of control of trying to figure them out, which is a waste of time, is what you see most narcissism teachers, and they always... They always reward the victim and allow them to stay stuck as the victim and blame everybody. That is, I blow up victim blaming. That concept of victim blaming is so destructive. At any rate, that's a side topic. Um, but they promote victimhood. It's the worst thing you can do for somebody. You guarantee they'll stay a victim. And so the best way to do that is to paradox everything. And see, and that my book, it's too, it's too long to explain in this video. But if you choose to, um, my book will show you how to navigate that. All right, let's see. Good to see you, Kenny. Well, hey, Anna Lush. Good to see you too. And for those of you who don't know, she we just had a private session the other day. So I'm glad you popped up. And she's asking, will I be doing these regularly? I don't know. Maybe. I I, I'm kind of liking this. I get so sick of talking to the camera, just talking to myself and editing it. It's just boring. I'm like, I, I'm so tired of hearing my voice. So maybe I'll do more of this because then I don't have to, I just put it up and I'm done. So, um, and I think there's more of a connection because it, it feels like you get to be a part of it. And I like that. I, I just started not liking how detached, you know, me just being a speaking head all the time. So, Deeper, I love you too, deeper spirituality. Thank you. Um, Eric, pity him. Uh, what, are, what are some ways to miss somebody without being obsessed? Great question. I think it's Eva or Eva. Um, here's what I learned to do. With my second wife, the divorce from her was so overwhelming, I almost took my life. The withdrawal from her. Um because I realized now we had become addicted to each other. And I could never, I, what was killing me was I couldn't figure out what was true. Because there was a period in our marriage where men, if you wanted to write a script on how every man wants to be treated by a woman, she did it. Like it was magic, pure magic. And so you go, was that true or was that a manipulation? How do I make sense of that? How do I figure that out? Well, I finally realized I have no control over somebody else, especially what's in their mind. I will never, no matter what, look, everybody tells us something, but does that really mean that's everything in their mind? We'll never know that because we can never get inside their mind. And so I came up with this quote one day. I finally figured it out and I went, you know what? This helped me reconcile it. And so Evan, just so you know, as you can see, as I, as I talked about those loving moments, I miss those. I cherish those. I have great memories about those. And that's why I developed this quote. <clears throat> you can love the memories, but no longer love the person. You see, I couldn't love somebody who I couldn't trust if their actions were genuine or not. But I could sure love the memories. I didn't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. They can coexist together. I can hold on to the memories that, at least to me, whether they were true or not, were absolutely magical. And what a gift. I'm so lucky I got to have those. It doesn't matter if they were real or fake. In the moment, they felt absolutely incredible. And that's good enough. And so that would be my suggestion to you. That's what I used. <clears throat> and that brought me peace. So I hope it brings you peace too. How does a person forgive oneself after making a life altering mistake? That's from Joel. Wow. We're getting into, this is what I teach, Joel. I call it the authentic self cycle. You're going to learn about it in my new book, Your Journey to Being uh, Yourself. I've never discussed it. It's not in it. There's so much content. It's 440 pages. This book's a monster. And most of it, you've never heard me talk about. It's stuff I've been processing and developing, and I finally decided to puke it all out. And the authentic self cycle consists of four things, truth, responsibility, healing, and forgiveness. 
I develop those to combat the worst day cycle, which are trauma, fear, shame, and denial. All of us. You can bring any person you think has their life together, is super successful, whatever condition it is you want, in three questions. I can show you how they are in severe trauma, have experienced severe trauma, are detached from their authentic self, every person on the planet, and codependent. Those three things. You can bring anyone you want. And in three questions, I can show you how all three of those are true. They're detached from their authentic self, they're stuck in the worst day cycle, and uh, they're codependent. And so that's why I developed these processes. The way to combat that is through two things, emotional authenticity, which my book lays out the whole process, my new book does, and the authentic self cycle. All right, so the key to forgiving, when we can't forgive ourselves, the reason we can't forgive ourselves, <clears throat> so the reason we can't forgive ourselves is because we're detached from our authentic self. We're in our worst day cycle, specifically the shame and denial portion. We have separated every single person on this planet is born with inherent value and worth. Everyone. Okay? We lose that in childhood when our parents discipline and shame us, our soul, not our behavior. We detach from our authentic self. We drop our authenticity in the pursuit of attachment because we'll die without it. And so the reason we can't forgive ourselves and, re and accept our inherent value and worth is because we're stuck in that attachment authenticity bind, which I talk about in my new book. And so that's where you are. That voice in your head is not yours. That's your parents' shame that you're still living with. That's the, they never healed their trauma. They dumped it into you. And every time you beat yourself up for that mistake, that's your parents' voice. And I'm going to prove it to you real quick. All right, Joel, I want to, I want right now, I want you to bring up the last memory you have of really shaming yourself for your mistake. Like really sit in the feeling, get it at eight to 10 of how awful you felt about yourself, all the terrible things you said about yourself. The first thing I want you to do is notice how all of those sentences you say about yourself, you've been saying them since childhood. You learn those in response to your parents shaming you. That's not your voice. That's theirs. So that's the first step. So now that you know that that's true, now I want you to think about what if you could never hear that voice again? You could never feel that feeling again. If that was completely gone and it, you're guaranteed to never think or feel that way again, do you see and feel what's left over? Do you notice how there's an electricity that runs through your body? The word every single client, every person I ever do this exercise with, they always say, lighter. I feel lighter. I feel empowered. But the first one is always lighter. Do you see what that means? You have just dropped your worst day cycle, their shame and, and dropped your denial. You are now experiencing your authentic self. And from this place, without that there, you can feel your inherent value and worth. From this place, you can forgive yourself. Now, the process to live in that, to do that on a daily basis, that takes the process of recovery. Worst day cycle recovery, that's my book, my classes, you know, all the different stuff, okay? Working with a professional to work through that trauma and pain and shame and all of that stuff. And most of all, the self-deception, because... Here's the thing that people don't recognize what our role is. Well, at least I shouldn't say our, I should make it about me because I don't know how everyone else does it. I only know how I do it. This is my belief. And this is how I pursue working with a client. <clears throat> First of all, my job is to be the person who regardless of the choice my client makes, they're never shamed ever. They're allowed to make mistakes. They're allowed to make decisions that even if I know they're going to blow up in their face, I let them. They never got that as a child. They got told not to do that. They need the opportunity to explore the world. Remember an hour ago, I said a two-year-old parents go, no, stop. Well, I'm the parent going, no, go, go, try it out. 
oh, I hear you say that it didn't work out. Well, what would you like to do differently? And so instead of going, what do you mean you did that? Well, that was stupid. What were you thinking? I show them that you can be loved in your mistakes. Oh, it's okay. So, okay, I hear that you don't like the consequence of that choice you made. So what are your options? What would you like to try now? And so there they are, the two-year-old that just fell down the stairs and goes, huh, that didn't work out too well. I think I'll stay away from the stairs. That's a much more effective way to allow somebody to reclaim their authentic self than demanding they change. They have to discover it on their own. And so <clears throat> the job, that's one job that I feel I have. The second job is you're here. Your view of the world is here. Well, it's filled with the worst day cycle. It's filled with the detachment of the authentic self. How is this brain and this outlook on life going to get here when all it's doing is running the exact same programs it's always had? It needs somebody who was also here and learned how to take the steps to get here so that they know where you are on that journey at all time. And they can point out, oh, I know that you're thinking that might work, and or I, I know you thought that might, might work. Do you see now why it didn't? And, and so my job is to redirect you. I, I use this analogy. Remember, um, um, oh gosh, The Wizard of Oz. Remember Dorothy, standing at the yellow brick road, all excited, and she sees the rainbow, and she knows that's her destiny. Like, that's her authentic self. That's everything that's, you know, manifesting her, everything she's ever wanted. And she wants to go, but she's hesitant. She's fearful because she can see the, the golden brick, you know, golden brick road, but it twists and turns and it disappears. So what's, what's going to happen along the way? <clears throat> well, my job as a client's coach is to lay the golden bricks out in front of them. I've walked the path and I, I take them there to that rainbow. Now, there are certain people like somebody reached out to me today and they, they've they suffered disability abuse. Well, I can't place the golden bricks in front of that person. I don't have a disability. So I haven't walked that journey. So as I said to them, I, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Uh, I don't know those bricks, you know, but for the thing, that's why I talk on, that's why I don't have many followers on YouTube because I talk on so many different topics because I'm so messed up. <laughs> I've had to, I've had to walk a lot and step on a lot of bricks and, and break them apart and rebuild them and go, oh, okay, this is actually how the brick is supposed to be formed. I've had to deal with a lot of perfect imperfections. And so, um, you know, I, I teach on the things that I struggled with and still struggle with. I'm not perfect. I'm not healed. We're never healed. Um, but things that I feel I have enough proficiency to help people improve their proficiency. Okay. I hope that helps you uh, with that, Joel. Shaquille, let's see. How do we choose a career that isn't working against us and re-victimizing us? Is a science career reliving my worst day of being emotionally detached? What a wonderful question. Excuse me. Um, and no, it's not a whiskey and Coke. I've been sober for years. I just, that's my weakness. I just love, I have a, I love sugar and I love Coke. So forgive me. Um, <clears throat> all right. Here's the thing, Shaquille, and for, and for everybody. 93% of the people on the planet are miserable in their careers, and that's because they're stuck in the worst day cycle, reliving their childhood trauma against them. They're not living, they're not pursuing their authenticity and their authentic selves. I did that for decades. I played two pro sports, I built homes. If you asked me during all of those careers if I if this was my destiny, I would have told you, oh my God, yeah, oh, I love what I'm doing. This was what this was my calling. <clears throat> what I realize now is all of those careers I chose as part of my worst day cycle to bring me here. Now, I'm still reliving my worst day cycle, okay? Think of it. My job as a kid was to listen to my parents and be their emotional support, the family support. My job was to push, push down my needs and wants and take care of everybody else. Um, well, what's a coach do? 
I sit and listen. Your needs are always above mine. Okay. Now, the difference is I've learned boundaries. So if somebody tries to transgress my needs and wants or my boundaries, I can, you know, I've had clients, you know, no one really severe, but some minor things. And I just, you know, very politely just set a wall of pleasantness and I don't, you know, I don't allow them to break that boundary. Okay. So just because we're pursuing a career that might emulate part of our childhood doesn't mean it, oh, it's always working against us. Here's the part of this that works for me, all right? The reason sitting with clients works for me is because I can be boundaried. Here's the other thing. By doing all of this work, like I lay out in my book, my next book, what I believe the authentic self, what that experience is, what it looks like, what it feels like, and how to attain it. And so what's so funny is when I'm with clients, they could be talking about something and literally inside I'm going, oh my God, I'm screwed. I have no idea what they're going through. What? Are, oh gosh, I can't help them. And then I always say, Kenny, just be patient. Just wait for it. And every single time I just sit, I just listen. And all of a sudden, boom, there it is. They put a sentence together in a certain way and it all, I see it all. I see their whole history. Like I know, I, like I know everything they're doing, why they're doing it, where it came from, even if they haven't told me. And then I just sit back and it's like, okay, now I have to assess what's the best way for them to absorb the information. You know, all th those are, you know, all those calculations. But my point to you is this, I was a very good athlete, but it hurt. Like it was such a struggle to be good. When I'm doing this work, it comes so easy. <laughs> like it just... I don't know, I just sit in the chair and it just happens. Like, I don't have to work at it. It's weird. Um, it's pure bliss. It's an incredible experience. And I, I share what that's like in my book. So that's, that's how I know that this is working for me. It doesn't feel like work. All right? I don't, when I get afraid before a hockey game or a golf tournament, that fear never left me ever, even if I was playing great. I experience a fear sometimes, or most of the times I don't. Usually the second I see their face, I see it. I'm like, okay, you know, or hear a couple words. I'm like, okay, I know what's going on. But when the fear comes up, it always goes away. I always, I always land back at peace. That's how I know it, it works for me. The second reason is this. When I was a child, every time I opened my mouth, I was always shouted down in silence. At least that's the way it felt to me. Well, people now pay to hear my thoughts and feelings. That feels really good. Because here, I'm going to be really vulnerable and honest with you. One of the, you know, do you know how I get so passionate about all of these topics and I get frustrated that people, you know, don't, don't talk about some of these things? Well, do, do you see what I'm doing in that moment? I'm reliving my childhood. If you know my life story and, and my relationship with my family members, especially my father, is I could be holding up this glass. And then that Christmas tree, isn't that adorable? I love that. But I could say, Dad, you want some Coke? And he goes, what do you mean Coke? That's not Coke. Why are you offering me Coke? Why are you saying that's Coke? That's water. I don't, I don't want any water. I'd love a Coke. Like, Dad, it's Coke. My dad had severe self-deception and denial problems um, over certain things, not severe, but certain things. Well, when I see people talking about certain things, I see their deception or, you know, all of these topics I get so passionate about. So what I'm really doing is I'm projecting my father's face onto all of you. I'm begging you to please listen to me just like I was begging my father to listen to me, all right? The difference is, is, you know, look, I've gotten tips. I make a career out of people listening to me, so that works for me. At least I get some of that reconciled. So that's the key, Shaquille, is when you're looking at careers, does it bring you peace? Or does it bring you fear and pain and angst? Does it feel like you're reconciling something and putting the top on it, or is it still destructive and painful?
That's That would be my suggestion. Now, you may not be able to find the career yet that brings that peace. Well, what that means is this career of science, you're going to have to do what I did. You're going to, it's part of your worst day cycle and how you're actively choosing to re-victimize yourself so that you can reclaim your authentic self. So in other words, it's not a problem. That's what, that's what's so funny is people are afraid to make mistakes. Our detachment, our authentic self is always in control. So the only reason, how do I, God, this is so complicated. It's, it, it's how do I make it short because it's in my book. Through the worst day cycle, we re-victimize ourselves. Our authentic self actually pushes us towards bad relationships. The shame and denial portions of the cycle push us, push us towards bad careers, hobbies, everything. So that we destroy ourselves enough that we finally turn it around and look at it. And once we use what I, I show you in my book, Your Journey to Be Yourself, how to paradox it and how to listen to the descriptors and metaphors that you use when you talk, when you learn how to do that, you'll see how you're victimizing yourself and how you actively chose it so that you can get into truth, take responsibility, do the healing work, and forgive yourself. That's the authentic self-cycle. And so what I was just describing is how emotional authenticity, the process of it, descriptors, metaphors, denial work, worst day cycle work, all of these processes, how they drive you into the authentic self-cycle of truth, responsibility, healing, and forgiveness, which then overcomes the worst day cycle of trauma, fear, shame, and denial. So I'm trying to give a very short answer that I wrote 440 pages to describe and lay out how to do this. But I hope that answered your question. Let's get to tunes. That's a cool name. Let's, yeah, we should be playing some tunes, shouldn't we? How do I get past the paradoxical need for and fear of intimacy? I still fear that I will subconsciously choose another dysfunctional relationship. Okay, well, I guess the first thing I'd do, Tunes, is I would paradox everything you just wrote. So do you see you've placed yourself even in your question? Look at your descriptors and metaphors. I'm going to actually, I guess you're going to get a glimpse into the book of how this works. He just wrote out exact like he just told me the solution in his question. And it's all by the way he, he in his question, he placed himself in a double bind. And Tunes, please, this I'm, I hope this is okay with you. Um, I don't mean to disparage you. I'm hoping that you feel um, loved and appreciated by me pointing this out. Um, and I hope you don't feel exposed, you know, because you're in a community of people. So, you know, I want to make sure you're okay with me showing how this works. But do you see how... In your, your question, you have taken both sides, both the fear and the craving. And so you've put yourself in the middle. That's called a double bind. If you go this route, you lose this one. If you go this route, you lose this one. Because you're attached to both. You're attached to both the desire and the fear. So what that tells me is, the negative, the fear, that's childhood trauma. You haven't faced that. That's your attachment authenticity bond. All of this fear of intimacy is because you don't want to let go of your parents because you dropped your authentic self to get attachment. And so ultimately, when somebody's in fear of relationship and connection, it's because they created a false persona, what I call the adapted wounded child, to connect to their parents. And so they know and this is like, this is his authentic self talking to him, literally telling him the answer, saying tunes. Do you realize that the reason you can't have intimate relationships is because you're already married to your parents. You sold your soul to them. You dropped your authenticity for attachment and you're afraid to let that go because you were abandoned so severely that you think if you drop this, you'll lose everything with them, whether they're alive or dead. Now, my book shows you how to heal all of that, and none of that's true, but that's what he's caught in. He's caught in this subconscious double bind. And what he's afraid of is, if I choose intimate relationships, 
and true love, not only with myself, my authentic self, and somebody else, I'm going to lose attachment to my parents. That's what the fear is. That's the worst day cycle. So the, I don't know, Tunes, how much you know about my content, but really this is deep worst day cycle work. Um, if you haven't read my first book, I'd start with that. But it's going to, again, this is an assumption. I don't know if it's true, but something in the way it's written, my what's popping up in my gut is that maybe you're earlier in the journey, you know, maybe a couple years or less of processing this. Um, or if it's been longer, nobody's ever taught you about shame and denial because what has you stuck is you're in self-deception about how you're seeing yourself. Not that that makes you bad. We're all like when you read my book, you're going to see we're all in massive self-deception. It is literally the single greatest killer on the planet today. And I lay it out very convincingly. And so you, because of the attachment authenticity bind, you had to detach from truth and responsibility. You had to take on shame and denial as a persona. And so you, that's why you're in this middle. Well, the more you do, this is what's called the scales of injustice. You'll learn about that in my book as well. <clears throat> the more you do work on um, the denial, the more yourself, you're, you'll reattach to your authentic self, self-esteem, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It'll make total sense to you. Okay. So my suggestions to you is if you, you know, if you don't want to spend the money, then go to my worst day cycle playlist, start watching those videos. All right. Start learning about the worst day cycle. Then when you're ready, if you feel like I'm a person you can trust and you want to invest, do the book, do the classes, you know, that would be kind of the progression. Oh, wait, do the videos, do the free downloads on my website, then the free class, um, online class, then the book, then the classes, you know, the, the full suite, the complete emotional authenticity method, um, which walks you through the recovery part of that. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Emprende to rumble. I don't, I don't, I don't roll my R's very good. Let me try that again. Emprende. See, I, that, oh, I go, uh, not uh. Emprende to rumble. My experience since I separate from my narc husband five years ago is fear, shaking, some sounds, panic me. is normal until, until now. Sorry, bad English. I think you, I think your English was um, muy bueno. How about that? for a Spanish speaker. What that tells me, Emprende, is um, there's a lot of trauma recovery that needs to be done. And if it were me and I was experiencing all of that, I would hire a professional. Again, it doesn't have to be me, but there's, there's a lot of childhood trauma that hasn't been worked through that has now been added onto by the relationship with this person. And so you, you know, a couple options, go through all of my childhood trauma videos. Um, again, all my free downloads, my free classes, take advantage of all of those. And, um, you know, if you like what you see and read, then you can move on to purchasing my books and my classes and stuff like that. If for whatever reason, um, you know, at some point too, with what you're describing, you're going to want to pick a professional to help you remember the yellow brick road, you, you're going to need somebody who's walked that brick road. But if you're not ready, like for a lot of people, when I, like, when I hear this stuff, I'm like, Oh, like when I was in your shoes, people with these questions and, you know, I tell that story in my first book when, you know, I told about my first wife and the abuse and we're going through the divorce and all the different things. And, and I just summed it up with, you know, Mike, I don't know how to be a man. And he said 13 words that changed my life. He said, you know, Kenny, when I was in your shoes, I went and became an expert. And so the second he suggested any book or any class, I just took it. Like I didn't have, I didn't hesitate at all. And, and this is a part of my recovery. And, 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 and as a coach, I need to get better at. Almost nobody does that. They go, oh, everyone gets afraid. And I'm like, that. I guess I just was so sick and tired of being sick and tired 
but most people are afraid to do recovery work. I, I it, it's hard. That's hard for me to grasp, and and it's something I need to grasp better so I can understand people better, um, because that was never my experience. I wanted to do the work, and then, and maybe well, maybe it's because it attached to my authentic self, because it was. Maybe that, I never thought of that till now. The reason I got so excited is because it brought me here. I, in that moment, my authentic self knew I'd end up here. So maybe that's the difference. Maybe your careers, you're not meant to teach in this fashion. I believe we're all teachers, but maybe you're not meant to teach in this fashion. So at any rate, um, that's a standard statement I can say to anybody. It will always require recovery work. Any question that's posed, we are going to have to invest in ourselves. Watching videos, reading books is not enough. You're going to have to pick a teacher that you can't skip that process if you want to live in fulfillment, um, peace, happiness, and your authentic self. You will not get there unless you invest in, in somebody's programming classes. I've invested in many different ones. Um, I've learned stuff from everybody. So, all right. Kenny, how about a parenting class? You know, I've thought about that, but there are a lot of teachers that are better at it than I am. Um, I, I always suggest, I tell all my clients, pick up um, Jim Fay and Foster Klein's Parenting with Love and Logic. You learn that, parenting becomes easy. I would, I would really suggest you get that if you're a parent. Um, let's see. Do you think, can we get over overachieving? Coming from a narcissistic household? Yes, of course we can. Yeah. Our brains are neuro, we have neuroplasticity. We can overcome anything. It's just a choice. It's a choice to do the work. If we choose not to do the work, if we sit here thinking and blaming and, and considering, no. But if we go, okay, I want to get over it, and then go become an expert. Go learn, develop the knowledge, skills, and tools, and we'll overcome it. Or we will overcome it to a level that's manageable and it's no longer running the household. Okay? Um, uh, Kevin Tui, just a hunch. Do I like Pink Floyd? Actually, not at all. There's that one song. We're just two lost souls swimming in a fishbowl. I love that. That part of the song. The rest of it's okay, but I've always loved that part of the song. But that's it. The rest of their stuff. Right over my head. My older brother now, he loved Pink Floyd. I Look, I'm going to throw myself under the bus. I love disco. <laughs> look at the way I dress. Like, I should have been in the 70s, man. I would have loved those big high collars. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm I'm big on the Bee Gees and Casey and the, Casey and the Sunshine Band. Like, it's so funny, too, to watch all the rappers sample all of, they sample almost everything from the disco era. Everyone puts down disco, yet everyone steals from disco. The 70s, the, not, the 70s era is the best music ever on the planet. It's, the, well, I'm getting away. That's a different topic. I'm here to help you. Um, how do I trust people? The reason we can't trust other people is we don't trust ourselves. That's because we're stuck in the worst day cycle. We keep going against our own morals and values, needs and wants, negotiables and non-negotiables. We can't say no. We give ourselves away. We focus on what we can't control versus what we can control. Fear is the RIP method, rest in peace, rejection, inadequacy, powerlessness, because we haven't conquered that. And we haven't actually done the authentic self-cycle work of truth, responsibility, healing, and forgiveness. That's why we can't feel safe around others because we don't feel safe inside. So whenever we can't trust somebody else, it's always a lack of trust in ourselves because a, a human in their authentic self recognizes that I'm human, I'm limited, I'm perfectly imperfect. And so I'm going to get hurt. It's a part of life. Every person on this planet always at some point hurts somebody else. That's what humans do. It's a, every human has said or done something awful. We've all victimized somebody. It's just, it's just going to happen. Now, I'm not saying we should allow it or sweep it under the rug. 
But we haven't reconciled any of that. We haven't reconciled how we've hurt others. We haven't reconciled how we're hurting ourselves by not doing the recovery work and learning what our morals and values are, needs and wants, negotiables and non-negotiables. By learning, we haven't learned how to say no. We haven't learned how to overcome rejection, inadequacy, and powerless. I mean, we just haven't done the recovery work. And so I can't trust you because I don't trust me because I'm not doing the work. And that sounds harsh, but I teach truth. And truth feels harsh when we're in self when we're in shame and self deception. That's why so many people it takes them a while to like me because their shame and denial is so high. And I I do my best to speak truth. It's like a pen, you know the uh, American Indians say truth has to be has to be penetrating to be effective because the shield of shame and denial is so thick on all of us. I have I choose. Don't know if it's right, but it seems right to me. I make the choice to just go and be direct and straight. So if we can't trust anybody else, it's because we can't trust ourselves. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let me go down here. Kevin, you're very welcome for answering. I'm loving this live too, Aaron. This is kind of fun, isn't it? Uh, let's see. Getting personal information from you is worth it. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, you can ask me personal questions, uh, Kevin, or anyone else. Um, if I don't want to answer it, I'll just say that doesn't work for me. I will. Remember, I talked earlier about boundaries. You don't ever have to protect yourself. Uh, you know, you don't have to shy away with me. It's my job. Remember, truth, responsibility. I'm responsible. Nobody ever hurts me unless I allow it. That's why none of this whole victim mantra that we're pushing is so destructive. And so if I answer a question here that I didn't want to answer and I feel exposed, I did that to me. You didn't make me. You just asked a question. I could have politely said no. Okay. So don't shy away from asking for your needs and wants. That's how we get out of the codependent dynamic. It's nothing wrong with ever asking for our needs and wants as long as we're willing to accept hearing a no and we always have a backup plan in place because it's never their job to meet our needs and wants, ever, even in a marriage. Only sometimes they will. And it's wonderful when they do. But if they don't, it's our job to put a plan in place because it's our need. It's my job to meet it. Okay? All right. I have no further questions for your honor. Happy New Year. Nancy, that's actually kind of cute and funny. Uh, happy New Year to you, too. Uh, how do I deal with imposter syndrome? It takes away a lot of power. Great job, Luke. Imposter syndrome is the worst day cycle. It's childhood trauma. That's it. Um, I've done videos on the imposter syndrome, Luke, um, versus going into it here. If you search on my YouTube channel, um, you'll find videos on that. Uh, if you're tired of being in the imposter syndrome, then my new book, Your Journey to Being Yourself, imposter syndrome is primarily self-deception and denial, and we don't see it. And my, my new book is really groundbreaking. I show how both Anna and Sigmund Freud, um, they're, they're the ones who developed the concept of denial, the nine con uh, forms of denial. Wonderful work. I think they're limited um, because they only classify denial as a, a defense mechanism. I, I think I show very convincingly um, that their uh, definition of denial needs to be updated. I've also added a tenth, what I call indirect denial, that permeates everybody's life. And um, that denial needs to be classified as an attack mechanism. As a child, it does defend us. We're too young to intellectually, emotionally process what happens to us. But because as a society, we never talk about or deal with this stuff. As adults, we re-victimize ourselves with the worst day cycle. And remember what the worst day cycle is. Trauma, fear, shame, and denial. The shame and denial boomerangs back and destroys our lives. Any person's life, whatever the struggle is, it's always the worst day cycle. I can show it, you know how the imposter syndrome, whatever it is, they're stuck in childhood trauma. And until they do that work through emotional authenticity, the authentic self cycle, they're going to be stuck in this place. Okay. I've missed you. Uh, 
I've missed you too, Krista. Good to see you, Krista. Krista's a client. Uh, um, she's Krista's in the book, by the way. Krista's story is in the book and how she dealt with her shame and denial and how she confronted her self-deception and her life turned like that. That remember that, Krista? That was the fourth session when you did that. And I told you, your your transformation was so powerful, I was gonna put it in the book. So it's in there. And I and I think I yes, I used your name too. I didn't give you a pseudonym, so you'll know it's you. Um, all right. What about being too trusting? Yeah, no. Uh, and Barba, I answered this earlier. Um, if we're getting um, burned, it's because we, again, I teach truth and responsibility. This is going to feel harsh. If we're getting burned, it's because we haven't gone and become an expert on our childhood trauma and attraction mechanisms. If we keep picking people that are manipulating us and all of that, that's because we haven't healed our childhood trauma where we learn to be attracted to people like that. They're not the problem. We're, it, remember earlier, if I can't trust somebody else, it's because I can't trust me. It's because I'm detached from my authentic self. I'm reliving my worst day cycle against myself. I'm responsible for that. The other person is not the problem. And so whenever we put the blame on them, we're talking to ourselves. And so as she says, how to deal with this, stop trusting, isolate. Well, we're already doing that. See, it's a paradox. The words she's using, she thinks she's talking about them. She's already telling herself that I need to stop, stop trusting me. I need to stop isolating myself and choosing people to guarantee that I'm going to be isolated. I need to go do the recovery work so that I can be emotionally available and so I can trust myself and attract somebody who will return it. That's called a paradox. You're going to learn how a paradox is the secret to recovery that nobody's ever taught you or told you about and how to take those descriptors and metaphors like I just did with her, turn them around and show you the truth about yourself. That's in my new book, Your Journey to Being Yourself. It's on Barnes & Noble. It's on Amazon. It's Your Journey to Being Yourself. I'm begging you, if you want to learn how to start trusting yourself and put an end to this pain, it will show you how. All right. Do you think it's healthy to block, cut off family members that cause you to almost admit yourself to a hospital? Well, they didn't cause us. Um, we did that to ourselves because we allowed ourselves to be around people who were toxic. It depends on the age. You know, I, I mean, I, I this comes from entitled. I don't have in, information. I'm going to make assumptions on this question because I don't have all the information. So if we are an adult, and we end up in a hospital, in a mental, emotional hospital. It is not the other person's fault. No one ever makes us think, feel, do, or believe anything. I'm going to prove that to you in my next book. It's not even how emotions work. Every single emotion we create in ourselves, it's not their words. It's not their actions. The science shows it. The new science on how the brain works shows it. Nobody has ever made you think feel, do, or believe anything. You create all of your own emotions and they're all based on childhood. So when we have an inability to protect ourselves from predators, it's because we haven't done the healing work. That's why we're still stuck in the worst day cycle. All right. I, I can't lay out the full process. It's all in my next book, your journey to being yourself. And you'll see that truth in title. Um, um, and please don't hear me as disparaging you. This is everybody. We're just not taught these things. All anyone teaches is the outer edges of the puzzle. No one's teaching the middle. Not no one. That's not fair either. That I'm aware of. I haven't seen people lay out the full process to put the middle pieces of the puzzle together so we can live in our glory. And that's, that's the focus of my work is the middle of the puzzle. The processes to teach you so you can do it for yourself. Well, that requires a choice on you. I can't do that work for you. Doing videos and all of that, you're going to, at some point, the individual has to choose to go become an expert and sit down and take the time to, like in my classes, write out the journey books, you know, all, answer all the questions, read the books, do the exercises, hire a professional. We have to choose to do that work. If we do that, then we get the middle of the puzzle. All right. Why can't I forgive? I've said that before. Um, that's because we haven't forgiven ourselves because we went against 
our morals and values, needs and wants, negotiables and non-negotiables. We victimize ourselves with our choices. We do, we our self-deception. We knew from the beginning they were trouble and we didn't listen to ourselves because we listened to our trauma gut, not our authentic gut. Um, and so the reason we can't forgive somebody else is we can't forgive ourselves. The only way to forgive ourselves is to do recovery work on the worst day cycle. You can learn about that in my first book, Your Journey to Success. You know, it offers some of the recovery process and then my new book, Your Journey to Being Yourself. All right. I just had a breakup with a man who put me through intense emotional ups and downs. He was miserable all the time and used his money to manipulate me. This is from Maybe Yode. Okay, I'm going to paradox this as well. Um, and please, the, see, truth is a penetrating arrow. The, because our society is so filled with shame and deception, we keep thinking we, we've all been sold this line of goods that we're victimized by somebody else. We're not. We did this to ourselves because of the worst day cycle. Unconsciously, we're just reliving childhood patterns. No one's taught us how, this is how it works. And so we think the other person is doing it to us. But because of our unhealed trauma, we're doing it to ourselves. So I'm going to flip all of this around. I just had a breakup with a man who put me through intense emotional ups and downs. So what this really says is I just put myself through a breakup with a man and I put myself through intense emotional ups and down because I didn't leave when the ups and downs started. Because I was caught in my worst day cycle, I stayed. I kept thinking I could change them. I kept minimizing, suppressing, condoning, justifying their poor behavior. I kept listening to their words instead of, instead of watching their actions. I'm responsible for putting myself through emotional ups and downs. I'm not to blame. I'm not bad. And I'm responsible because I didn't make myself an expert in learning how childhood trauma works and the worst day cycle and how attraction mechanisms works. And because I didn't gain the knowledge, skills, and tools, I put myself in a position to relive my childhood trauma with this man. That's the first sentence. He was miserable all of the time and used his money to manipulate me. What that the next sentence would be is, I was miserable all of the time, and I allowed him to manipulate me with his money. And in turn, I manipulated him and by staying because I, because I accepted the money. So it was a dual manipulation. That's the self-deception. The, the, the man or woman who stays for the money, they're just as manipulative. And then they blame the other person that, oh my God, they bought me all these things. Well, we could have said no, and we didn't. We accepted it. Remember, I teach four things. Truth, responsibility. Now, these are tough to accept until we do the healing work. When you learn about the worst day cycle, how trauma, fear, shame, and denial work, and especially shame and denial, and we're all caught in deception, and this is an example of being caught in deception. We don't see ourselves accurately. We think it's the other person. Well, when we do the healing work, we get into truth and we can take responsibility and go, okay, it is true they manipulated me. It is true they were miserable all the time. It is true the relationship was emotionally up and down. But it wasn't just them. I was all of those things. I was actually speaking to myself when I asked Kenny that question. Oh my God, I never saw that. But now that I know how descriptors and metaphors and a paradox work, now that I know how self-deception and denial work from reading Kenny's book, Your Journey to Being Yourself. Oh my God, I see it. I'm set free. Now I know what my authentic gut feeling is like instead of following my trauma gut feeling. Okay? Please, maybe Yode, I know truth. When I speak truth, it really feels assaulting. I want you to know that feeling of assault isn't from me. Remember, all emotions are from childhood. So if you feel like I'm assaulting you, that's your parents' voice telling you you're bad. It's not you. Because I'm not saying that. Truth is love. I'm loving you. I'm giving you the middle of the puzzle, not the outer edge to go, oh, you poor thing. And yeah, there are terrible men out there. And, you know, the victim support group. That's not support. Because it doesn't get you out of the pain you're in. The only way to get yourself out of the pain is all these processes I've laid out for you, okay? Now, again, in the beginning, it feels like I'm being the biggest jerk and really awful to you. Try, 
I'll make you a deal. If you choose to invest in learning about this process, I'll bet you a th- I'll bet you I bet you any, any amount of money you want. You will come to the same conclusion. Everything I've laid out, you go, oh my God, you're right. You're right. You'll see it. You'll see it. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right. Uh, I just pre-ordered the new book, John. Hey, all the way in the UK. I think you're probably John Thompson. Everyone give John. I, I wish I knew how to do all the crazy things on here. So I'll just be crazy. Okay. Thank you, John. Uh, you're probably my first UK buyer. Good for you. Uh, but what people who are, let's see. Someone who lies or cheats? Well, why did we stay with the person who's lying and cheating? Again, we have to turn everything on ourselves. If someone is lying and cheating and we notice it and we keep going back, that's not about them. Do you see, if I keep going back to a person who lies and cheats, who's the liar and cheater now? I'm lying to myself. And I'm cheating myself. See, I looked at her descriptors and metaphors, lies and cheats, flipped them. So if I, if somebody is constantly lying to me and I don't set a boundary and go, you know what, this doesn't work for me. If I don't leave, I have now become the liar because I'm going against myself. My morals and values, according to this person, is I don't want to be around a liar. Well, then I'm but I am. I keep going back. That makes me a liar. I'm the liar. Also, we both are liars. That also means I'm cheating myself because I'm going against my morals and values, needs and wants, negotiables and non-negotiables. That's the thing, people. Every judgment, every criticism, everything you blame, everything you hate, while it may be true they're doing that, You're not bringing it up to talk about them. You're trying to reclaim your authentic self. You're speaking truth to you, but no one's taught you the process to hear the truth. That's what my new book shows you how to do. How to hear the truth. Take Use the authentic self cycle. Truth, responsibility, healing, forgiveness. Through the process of emotional authenticity, which is descriptors, metaphor. I mean, there's so much to it. But I just laid out, you know, little tidbits of how I, you know, this is like, literally, this is a simple solution. We just have to gain the knowledge, skills, and tools to understand how all of this works. And then the lying and cheating that we're doing to ourselves ends. Okay. Great question. I really appreciate all of you for being vulnerable. Even bringing this stuff up as I, you know, each time someone tries to blame somebody else. I keep flipping it, but you, you know, you keep going there. That takes guts and courage to face our shame and denial. So pats on the back to all of you. All right, let's see here. Bethany said, thank you. My ears only work so I can now what my eye, so I can know what my eyes hear. Good one. Oh, Penny Coyote in the house. North, North Carolina, California coast. That's cute. In the house. I like that. Um, Healthy connection to So true, Kenny. We do this to ourselves in the worst day cycle until we actually do the work, investing in the healing work. Well said, Jeanette. Nice. Um, Kevin, having enough money for your own needs is your responsibility. Amen. Well said. Bridget, can someone be addicted to shame? Yes. Actually, I lay that out. The, the worst day cycle, the trauma, fear, shame, and denial, the fear creates an emotional chemical addiction that embodies both the shame and the fear. So yes, that's what keeps us stuck repeating it. That's why you sit there and you go, oh, I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't do this. And you can't stop. That's the essence of an addiction. The hallmark of an addiction is to know something is destructive, to know what the consequences will be if we pursue it and not being able to stop ourselves. That's an addiction. Now, think through your life. That cookie at night, that popcorn, the blowing off the gym, all the different things we do. Our whole society is massively addicted, and we're addicted to the worst day cycle, along with many other things. Great perception there, Bridget. 
of that. All right. Julie says, hey, Kenny, how about you believe um, them and they have been lying to you and you find out the lying and cheating after five years because you thought uh, you had trust and had no idea. Um, what that tells me, Julie, and this is going to be hard to hear. What that tells me is in situations when that happens, we're so detached from truth and reality. The lies were always right in front of us and we chose to ignore them. And we, this is, you, and this is really hard to hear because like, what? No, I paid attention. That, that's just not true. And that response is proof of the denial and self-deception. It is such an epidemic in our society. Like I talk about, my next book shows 21 ways that CIA agents tell when somebody's deceptive. And when you read that, you're going to realize every single conversation you have has, has not every single one. But our normal, everyday conversation with a stranger on the street, our mother, father, kids, spouse, is filled with deception. None of us are aware of deception. It is the single greatest epidemic, pandemic, disease on the planet, and nobody's talking about it. And that's why I wrote this book, because I show convincingly it's at the heart of everything. And so, Julie, what breaks my heart is nobody taught you this. Nobody, remember, everyone in this personal, not everyone. In my opinion, too many people are working on the outside edges of the puzzle, the, the you know, recovery puzzle, self-help puzzle. They just want the easy things, the bubble. Go, oh, he's so sweet. I like him. Oh, I feel so good when I listen to them. And, and I don't make people feel good because I deal with the middle of the puzzle. Well, look, what do you want? What kind of life do you want? Imagine this picture. Look at that. Is that pretty? What if, it, what if that picture was hanging there and it only showed the border? Would you look at that picture very much? No. What makes that picture so beautiful? The middle. And that's your life. That's you. That's all of you. You're in the middle there. And that's why I made that my passion, my focus. And, and to do that, the secret to finding all of that glory and grandeur in the middle of the puzzle in your painting is you have to become an expert in how much we all are in denial and deceive ourselves of truth. We can't see ourselves authentically. We are not in our authentic self. We think we are, but we're not. And that's why I wrote this book. I'm begging people. Like, I just, see, this. remember earlier I said, Part of my recovery is doing this work because you guys get to play the role of my father. And so this is where I want to, I'm making you all my father. I'm like, will you listen to me? Will you listen to how much you need this? <laughs> like it's right now I'm totally in my childhood trauma because I'm just desperate to get people to, you know, like, please confront your self-deception. That's so codependent. Like, um, yeah, I'm so boundaryless right now. And so this is this is the biggest part of my recovery is um you know how much sadness I still have. Because underneath that anger and passion and excitement is tremendous sadness of how I I couldn't get my father to hear me. And it's okay. And it's okay that I haven't reconciled at all. But I have but every time I admit it, every time I get into truth, take responsibility for it and, and admitting it to you, being vulnerable and honest and going, look, I'm a mess too. It's okay. The ability to be vulnerable with my darkness is how I paint the, paint the puzzle. It's how I paint the painting. Because if we can love the deepest, darkest, most ugliest parts of ourselves, this is what denial doesn't want us to see. It doesn't want us to see the truth of how ugly we all are. But if I can take that cover away and I can look at it and go, I love you. I know that right now in front of a bunch of people on YouTube, you're acting like a two-year-old and wanting them all to be your father and go, oh, good job, Kenny. It's okay. It's just okay. I can, like... That's my darkness. And it's my job to love it. And the best way to love it is to show it to you. 
and go, see, I have it. And it's okay that I have it. It's okay that you have it too. And if we both pursue it, we get that. That's what we get. So, but the choice is yours. I trust you to do what's best for you. And if all you want is the outside, good for you. I don't. I want the middle. Um, big fan from China. Impressed with your analysis on family enmeshment. This is Kevin Wang. I thought it was only a thing in China. Oh, oh my God. No, Kevin. I mean, the Eastern countries and um, the Middle Eastern countries. Oh, my God. Enmeshment is insane. But, yeah, uh, Asian countries, um, Eastern European countries, um, uh, Europe, not European, um, Middle Eastern, it is off the charts. But it's severe here in, in America, and it's getting worse with this whole cancel culture, political, rat, political correctness. They're just, all of that is enmeshment. It's just, it breaks my heart. All right, John Thompson says, your journey to success is a must read. Lots of wisdom and healing. Thank you, John. And, and for those of you who don't know, John just bought my new book, Your Journey to Being Yourself, and he's all the way in London or somewhere in the UK. Uh, let's see. Uh, maybe said, oh, okay, maybe Yode. Remember earlier, I was really afraid she might hear how I was talking about, you know, she was blaming the other person and she just came uh, back. She said, I had to step away for a second, but I just rewatched your answer to me. You are so right. Thank you for your reminder. I knew I should have left from the beginning. See, that's at the heart. Whenever we're blaming somebody, ultimately, that's why we're blaming them because we knew it. We knew it. But since we're stuck in the worst day cycle, detached from our authentic, our, our authentic self, we couldn't act from this place. And that's why I wrote this book, so you can do that. So you can start learning how to do that. Okay? Kevin, I'm 33, and only this year did I truly realize I was brought up in an Amesh family. Most people don't even know. Don't even know. Um, let's see. What should I have done when he was in a bad mood? It was so overwhelming, and I just felt like I couldn't handle it. Um... Well, if it were me, I would have done codependence recovery and recognized there's nothing. I I would have not paid him any attention and gone, oh, my partner's in a bad mood. Huh. So what are my needs and wants today? Actually, I I could really use a hug. Um, so I'm going to call James. You know what? Maybe James, yeah, we'll go play golf together and I'll just sit and ride in the cart. And I need connection. So I'm going to hang out with James and I'm going to ask James for a hug. See, look. It's not our partner's responsibility to be in a good mood and make us happy. That's our job. So maybe Yode, what I'm reading in your responses, and, and you know, you know, there's a consistency here of deep, deep codependence. So my online classes walk you through that recovery. If you're not ready for that, start with Pia Melody. Her three books are on my website under the recommended reading. I I personally believe this, and I'm serious about this. I don't believe any adult of any age should ever be allowed to go on a single date until they read her three books. They are that important. What she's taught, discovered about codependence, and she's not she's not as popular as Melody Beattie and all these other names. And there's, part, I, I'm I'm sorry, all the other people teaching codependence. It's the outer edge of the puzzle. You're not learning about codependence. It's it's superficial bubblegum. You need to read Pia Melody. Her work is amazing. All of my codependence teaching, I learned from her. And my luckily, I got gifted. My therapist was trained by her, and so he's trained me. So it blows it away. If you don't know about the falsely empowered codependent, which nobody does unless they've been through Pia Melody, you don't know about codependence. And that's why when anyone says, how do I pick a therapist? That's the first question. Do you know about Pia Melody? Are you familiar with her work? No. Then I'm gone especially if you're going for codependence recovery, don't waste your time. They don't know about codependence if they don't know about the falsely empowered codependence. That's just my, that's my truth. Doesn't mean it's right. It's true to me. Okay. Flora, haven't seen or heard from you in a long time. Hope all is well with you. Um, let's see. Am I wrong for wanting to move on with my life and not go back to him? I don't know. I can't, only you can um, answer that question. 
Toon says, Kenny, I've had several aha moments watching your channel. Count me as a fan of your truth arrows. Just ordered your first book. Thanks again for answering my cue early. Love it, Toons. I'm so glad. Like, that make me cry. That's why I did it. Because I almost took my life because I went searching for answers and everything I found was the outside edges of the puzzle. It was superficial and bubblegum. And so that's what I want. I want people to find the middle of the puzzle. I want them to complete that painting. And so when I hear that, it lets me know I'm on the right path. Brandy Crane says, what's the name of the book again? I have two books. My first book is Your Journey to Success. I always recommend everybody get that because you need the base understanding of the worst day cycle. All right? The next book is your journey to being yourself. Again, it's your journey to being yourself. Oh, I should have had a placard here, damn it. Um, you know what? Oh, oh, look at me go. I, I'm not a computer. Look at this, I'm gonna put it in the chat. Here is the link. Look at me go. I can't believe I actually thought of that. There's the link to that, to my, um, first book. Oh, if you want, if you're not ready to purchase my book, here's the link to a free chapter of my book. All right. So the second link I'm posting, the first link I just posted is to pre-order my first book. The link I just put in there is to get a free chapter. And now give me a second, bear with me, and I will give you the link to purchase my first book which is available in, you know, all three formats, depending on what you like. Um, hold on here. And as I say, I always suggest people listen, get the, the audible content. Um, my next book, the audible is not ready yet. It'll be ready. Um, uh, oh, you want the PM Melody books? Well, that's going to take too long. Here's what I will do for you um, is I'm going to give you the link to my recommended reading list on my website. And there, I think they're the top three books right there on the recommended reading list. So I don't want to, I want to keep the conversation going. So this is to my website and please people, I tried to make my website a Google for personal development. There is, there are so many pages and so many blogs and stories and downloads. Like, no offense, don't send me private messages going, hey, can you tell me more about the classes? Like, I have laid out so much information about my private group, my classes, my coaching, Mike, my mentor, neurofeedback, the addiction centers that you work with. You know, all, I mean, this is the problem, and I talk about this in my next book too. Google and the internet. People don't know how to resource. They don't know how to be responsible and do the healing work anymore because they just go to Google and go do it for me. And so people get frozen. They don't know how to care for themselves. And so I'm begging you, don't fall into that trap. Don't just go right to my contact button and, and go, where's this? Can you send me this, Kenny? It's all there. Just take like a minute, I know they say like everyone's attention span is down to like eight to 12 seconds. Work on your recovery. Spend 30 minutes going through my website. You're going to be blown away at all the free content I've created for you, all the solutions I've given you. It's all right there. All your questions can be answered. So please learn, stop. Google's stated, stated mission statement is that people stop doing things for themselves and they think Google, and that's what's happening. It That's terrible for you. The key to recovery is number two, responsibility. So please, when it comes to your recovery, stop just going for the easy thing. Take the time, do the work, read, watch the full video, pause, learn to slow yourself down, work yourself through the process, don't allow the world and technology to speed you up. You won't be able to navigate your emotions 
and gain emotional authenticity if you keep getting sucked into that Google model, okay? All right, Monique says, you've been so helpful. Well, thank you, Monique. I'm glad you think so. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, RGS Lori 33 ordered Pia's books today. I swear, Pia should send me a royalty. I have probably sold 20, I probably sold more of her books than mine combined. Um, I get all my clients, I make everybody read Pia. She's just amazing. So, uh, and, and Lori says her 23 year old and she can't wait to read them. I love it. Danielle says facing codependence by Pia Melody is fantastic. It is. It is the super secret ingredients to codependency. Beautifully said, Danielle. It is. Like I said, if you've read anything else on codependency, when you read Pia, you'll go, oh my God. Why do I even read that stuff? It's junk. It's junk. I shouldn't say that. I haven't read every codependency book. John Bradshaw's stuff is amazing. So I shouldn't say that. But there's some names I'm thinking of that are very popular. And I shouldn't even say they're junk. That's not fair. That's the little child in me. Um, the truth is they're doing the best they can with where they are. And everybody... Look, recovery is like the, the steps on a ladder. People that do the outer edges of the puzzle, the very simple teaching, they have a gift. I can't do that kind of coaching and teaching. And nobody will ever hire me or watch my stuff until they go through somebody like that. They need those other teachers, all of those teachers that I've been disparaging and people with codependence and all of that. You see, I just, I just held myself accountable. I was hearing my descriptors and metaphors and realizing I was judging and blaming and belittling others, recognizing, oops, I gave myself away. I dropped out of my authentic self into my worst day cycle, but I used the process that I always use, caught my denial and self-deception. Now I'm getting back into truth, taking responsibility, and then admitting it is doing the healing work of <clears throat> nobody would ever hire me or watch my stuff if it weren't for those people that I was just throwing under the bus and saying that it's too superficial and it's junk and it's a waste. People start there because I'm too much. It's too scary. They need someone down here. And, and that, I shouldn't even say down here. That's not even accurate because there is, is gifted and what they offer is just as valuable. If not, it's probably more valuable than what I offer because if you can't open the door to somebody, why does none of my stuff would matter? So the truth is what they offer is much more important than what I offer because they got you to take a step up the ladder. And so that's a more accurate representation. So you know, forgive me for um, losing containment there. So, all right, let's see. Oh, that's very nice of you to pray for me. Thank you very much, uh, a quiet soul. Great live, Drusilla says. I'm thankful for all you do, said Entitled. Thank you, too. Um, oh, and Lori ordered my book, too. Did you, Lori, did you order my new book or my first book? I'm going to scroll back up. Uh, Amy Jarvis says, awesome live, Kenny. Reminds me of our group coach, Amy. Good to see you. Yes, it does remind me uh, of the group coaching days when I did the interactive ones. All right, Shaquille asks, how do I escape the self-victimizing and consciously knowing I am choosing failure for attachment with parents? Shaquille, great question. The only way you escape the self-victimizing is to do the recovery work. And I've laid out that recovery work in my first book, Your Journey to Success. I've laid it out in my online classes, um, Your Journey, uh, the Complete Emotional Authenticity Method. And you have two choices. You can either um, do, you know, do a monthly subscription, which is $77 a month, or you can do a one-time purchase, which is $747. And then when I add classes, it's just... You never pay again, and you have access at the lifetime. If you do the monthly, as soon as you stop paying, you lose access, and, and your recovery stops. So, <clears throat> but Shaquille, you're it, again. I say this all the time. You don't have to invest in my content, in my books, 
and my classes, but you're going to have to invest in somebody's and do the work. That's the only way you're going to get out of that trap. Okay. Uh, do I have a free active codependency group? I do not have a free one. No. Um, I, I do offer a lot of, you know, free email classes, free downloads, free codependent downloads on my website. I also offer, um, the introduction online masterclass for free. It does not, there's no coaching for me or anything like that. Um, but I don't have a codependence, uh, free codependence group. Uh, Smarty Pants says, I saw one video where you said that you could not work with borderlines, but some therapists say it's a treatable. I, you know, my life experience, I, I, I mean, borderlines are tricky. <clears throat> the person that I learned from borderlines from said that of all of the dysfunctions, it's the most difficult and the least able to help. As far as which therapies work, I don't know because as I said, I stay away. I, I don't, my favorite clients are people who want to do the work. Borderlines don't really want to do the work. And so I only take on clients who are like me and they're like, no, I'm desperate. I want to become an expert. I, I want that painting. I want the full puzzle. I don't, I don't work well with people early in the journey who don't, who aren't ready to do the work. I'm better for that. That's my skill set. Okay. Oh, I also have to show you guys something else. I can't believe I didn't bring this up. When you go to my website, this is really cool. I'm going to give you the link to my website. And if you click on it, watch. As soon as you open it, especially on a desktop, but on your phone, it might be down at the bottom, this little black thing that says, ask Kenny. When you click it, you can type in any question. It pulls from all of my content, whether it was a video, a blog, my book. It gives you the answers, and then it gives you a whole bibliography of this video, this video, this book, this, to get the end, to go and learn more. It is the sweetest. It's your whole, it's your Google. You, it's your self-help Google right there on my website. I forgot I didn't even tell you. Use that. It's called Ask Kenny. If the little black thing doesn't show up on your phone, it always shows up on my desktop. But if you don't find it, go to the menu. This is where you got to stay on my page for more than 10 seconds. Do a little searching. Go to the menu bar and down at the very bottom, you'll see Ask Kenny. Click that. Type in anything you want. You'll get answers to everything. It's wonderful and it's free. Noah, greetings. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you were able to make it. Uh, good to see you from South Texas. I don't know. I can't really do accents. I'll try and do cowboy. Don't know if you a cowboy or not, but there you go. There's my best attempt. Um, let's see. I got to go back up. Green. Hey, how do you say that? Parama, Parama, Parama duets from Netherlands. How cool. Uh, what do you do when your partner doubts your intentions? He was raised on You let him do the recovery work. Um, yeah, I, well, what you're describing here, Parama, is two people struggling with codependence. <clears throat> and so the reason you're in extreme pain at his, at his doubt and the reason he's doubting you is you're both stuck in the worst day cycle of childhood trauma that's being expressed through codependence. And so what you'll both need is emo the emotional authenticity method, codependent. You, you'll need to learn that. Hold on, I got to pause. You'll need to learn about the worst day cycle to heal your collective childhood trauma. To do that, you need to learn about the authentic self cycle and the emotional authenticity method that I teach. Um, and, and in that, you'll also need to learn codependence healing. You can learn about all of those and the processes in my first book, Your Journey to Success, my next book, Your Journey to Being Yourself, my online classes, um, my videos, and all my free downloads, and all of my content. I have the I have everything you need. It can all be found on my website. If it were me, I would start with my book, Your Journey to Success, so you can both get into truth about the childhood trauma you're reliving. And from there, uh, well, I get that, my first book and my second book, Your Journey to Being Yourself, 
And then I would get into the classes because the classes will begin the childhood trauma recovery and the codependence recovery. So that would be my plan. I trust you to work a recovery plan that works best for you. Are you, Kenny, you're a really good example of a human taking ownership. Thank you. That's my, that's, remember, my father, what killed him was denial and self-deception. And, and so remember, I'm always talking about judgment and blame. And so I am scared to death that I'm in constant self-deception and denial. Because remember, when we make it a passion like that, it usually means somewhere we are in self-deception and denial. Because, you know, my biggest fresh frustration with my dad was his denial. And so that means I'm in denial too. That's why I make truth and responsibility so important in my life and in my videos. That's why I'm so vulnerable and direct. Because I'm always trying to make sure I'm not in self-deception and denial. Because you will not live in your authentic self and you will not create a life that looks like that painting if you're not in truth and responsibility. Uh, let's see, Monique, I appreciate your videos. I've been the target of COVID narcissist. Awesome. I'm glad you're, Monique, my, net, my new book, if you're dealing with a covert narcissist and you learn about descriptors and metaphors and you learn about self-deception, it'll save your life with a covert narcissist. You'll, it'll be so easy to to stay away from them and then learn about boundaries. That That's how you, if it were me, I would make that the priority. My new book, uh, all the links are in the chat. It's called Your Journey to Being Yourself. Narcissist mother with dementia at 88. Well, narcissist and dementia, there's, there's nothing you can do about her. That's all about healing. If I were in that position, I would really seriously commit to childhood trauma recovery and codependence recovery. If you're struggling and being affected by her, it's because both of those are in play. And as I've said throughout the stream, I have all the content, the books and the classes to give you exactly what you need. The new book, yes, Monique, I, the new book, Your Journey to Being Your I have to end the chat. I can't even speak. It's been two and a half hours. I'm losing steam. Your journey to being yourself will change your life. It'll really help you. Um, how do I stop self-sabotage? Uh, that's from Isabella Brooks. That requires childhood trauma recovery, Isabella. That's the worst day cycle. Um, my first book teaches you about that. My online classes give you the process to heal it. And my next book, Your Journey to Being Yourself, takes my first book and the classes to the next level of recovery. So those three things would be what you need. You know, that again, I said this maybe two hours ago, that many people's questions are, you know, they, they want, and I'm not saying this is you, uh, Isabella, I don't know you, but most often when people ask questions, what they want is a simple sentence that goes, oh, if I just do that, it'll be gone. There isn't. There isn't a simple sentence. There are simple sentences that go, oh, well, that'll deal with that little piece. To conquer any of these questions requires a commitment to doing the work. There's just no other way about it. We have to do a lot of work. And it cut, it's childhood trauma, it's codependence, it's self-deception and denial. We have to heal from the worst day cycle. We have to develop emotional authenticity, and we have to pursue the authentic self-cycle. That's a lot of new information that we have to invest in and learn about and take the time to educate ourselves on so we can live in that process. Okay. All right. Where can I find Ask Kenny? If you scroll uh, entitled, if you scroll back up, there's a link to my website. As soon as you open my website, if it's on the desktop, it pops right up. If you do it on the phone, at least on my phone, there's this little black bar at the bottom that says Ask Kenny. If neither of those show up, go to the menu, scroll all the way to the bottom, click Ask Kenny. It'll save your life. It's awesome. All right. Um, yeah, I know I, I love color. This is, I'm going to, guys, I hate to do this. This has been a lot of fun, but I'm exhausted. You can see it in my eyes. Uh, and I, I don't want to give myself away. But emotionally, um, I'm a bit worn out. And I think I will end on Noah. Noah Ortiz says, I love your color scheme, your outfits, set you apart on YouTube. 
You know what's really funny is years ago when I first started this, I was being interviewed by this guy and he brought up the way I dressed. And he goes, you know, that's a great brand that you created. Really sets you apart. And I'm like, pardon me? And he goes, well, you know, the suits and the pocket squares and, you know, it really sells an image. And I laughed. I'm like, I like, I don't know anything about marketing. That's probably why I have such a small following. I can't stand marketing. I love talking about all this stuff. This is what drives me, you know, but I'm terrible at marketing. I dress the way I dress. I wear the bright colors because it's an expression of how I feel inside. And I just love fashion. I love clothes. They, I wake up every morning, I stand in front of my closet, I'm like, I just get excited. I love to look at bright colors. I love my house. You've seen the way my house is decorated. It brings me joy. It makes me happy. It's an expression of how my heart is now in joy. It wasn't that way. It's, if you've read my any of my, well, you're going to read stuff in my next book, Dark Days, that I didn't share in my first book. But I've had a lot of darkness in my life. And I have very little now. But when I do have those dark moments, because of everything I'm sharing with you, everything I've put in my book, Your Journey to Success, everything I've put in my classes in the Greatness University, everything I'm putting in this new book, Your Journey to Being Yourself, I've done all that work. I worked my ass off, and I continue to work my ass off. And it's brought me to this place. And I'm so thankful. Ah. And I have absolutely no power and control over you guys. And this is where my codependence comes out and my dad comes out. Because I desperately, just like my father, I desperately want you guys to pursue all this stuff. But I don't have that much power. I didn't have power over my dad and I don't have it over you. And maybe you don't need to pursue any of this. Maybe your life is fine the way it is. Um, but I get really revved up because for whatever reason, I think everybody needs it. And I don't know that that's true. But if you're in pain, if, whether it's self-sabotage, childhood neglect, inner child healing, childhood trauma, narcissist recovery, codependence, my personal belief is I've developed really good processes that I've seen transform people's lives. And so if you're not getting the results you want, I've tried to price it really affordable too. Um, I hope you take advantage of it. And if you learned something from tonight, if you want to donate anything, I'd appreciate it. You know, I'm not, I'm not making millions doing this and don't feel sorry for me. That's not why I'm saying it. I do this. Someone brought up earlier careers. I love talking about this stuff. You can see, I just like, I come alive. Um, but if anything I've done has been a benefit to you, then um, I'd appreciate the help. See, I got to learn to ask for my needs and wants too. So at any rate, this has been a really fun night. <clears throat> Two and a half hours of getting to meet a lot of you and learn about you and answer your questions. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Um, you know, I'll probably do it again. I don't know where or when I, I need to process emotionally how I feel about all of this, but I'm incredibly thankful at the opportunity. And so please, I feel like I shared a lot of really good content tonight that if you're just tuning in and you may have missed, it would be really beneficial to go back and listen to because you know, that's, I'm always trying to give a lot of deep content to give you solutions. So if you just popped on because you got home late from work, please rewatch the video because I, I think it'll really help you. So I think I'm going to end it there. Um, I'm exhausted, um, but it's a good exhausted. So, uh, and I'm, I can't look, forgive me. I see comments. People are saying probably really nice things, but I don't want to look at it because I know me, I'll get sucked in and want to respond. So um, I'm letting you know, I'm not ignoring you. Um, I, I will look at the comments later, but I can't look now because I know my codependence and I'll, I'll get sucked into that. So 
Um, see, I have to learn how to say no too. And so I'm not going to look at all the, you know, the things you guys are saying so that I can protect myself and uh, get myself another Coke and maybe something to eat and then go sit in front of the TV and uh, reflect on a really nice, enjoyable night with all of you. So thank you again. I'll say one last time. I think my new book, Your Journey to Being Yourself, is groundbreaking. It'll totally change your life. I think it's that powerful. That's just my truth. Um, so I hope you check it out. Um, I think it'll make a big difference in your life along with my first book. So at any rate, thank you for following me and trusting me with your journey. Um, I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me that, um, you give me that opportunity. So I have to go now. Take care you guys.